open source enthusiast and networking, mesh networking enthusiast. He's, he was working in the Falcon community when he realized that mesh networking protocols are not as efficient as they could be and that they limit how many nodes can be part of the network. Therefore, he uh, started to simulate mesh, ne mesh networking protocols and today he will talk about that. If you're listening th to this and think maybe I can be more part of the audience, we invite you to our virtual audience. We have a beamer here so you can watch the talk and the speaker can see your face and your reactions to that. That is available in a Jitsi room under audience.rc3.oeo.social. Please join there. And there's nothing more to say for me. We're really glad to have you here. Thank you, Victor. OK, hello, everyone. Uh, this is my talk about uh, how I try to emulate huge mesh networks uh, for the purpose of like making better ones. And well, of course, you start with out with taking what's already there, putting it uh, into some tests and testing it. And um, yeah, so let's start. I mean, OK. Um, yeah, my name is Moritz, uh, as have been already told. My, my family name is very funny and very confusing, which is awesome. And I'm a long time um, free and liberal open source programmer. So I do a lot of software related to distributed networks, um, meshing, security even. And most of your, my stuff you can find on GitHub. And I've been with the Fryphone community since 2011, 2012, around that time. And uh, I found it awesome to uh, flash Wi-Fi routers, put them out there, let them create a big, huge mesh network. At least that was my, my dream. And of course, to connect people so they can talk to each other without relying on other proprietary uh, infrastructure from Vodafone, Telecom, and the likes, or even to get even internet to, to refugee homes, stuff like that. So yeah, that, so that was my, my idea. Uh, I'm mostly uh, this is uh, uh, idea of making big, huge networks that c uh, connect everyone but are still distributed and not centralized. And over time, I learned that, well, we can get to a few hundred nodes in our community, um, but then it gets problematic since we are using Wi Fi a lot, so, and we also, these mesh networking protocols that we use, they're quite, uh, well, they're okay. That we're good in comparison, but they're still a bit inefficient for what we try to achieve, which is much, much harder than compared to what you want uh, to achieve when you have a data center or stuff like that, where you have gigabit links and not like pesky uh, horrible Wi-Fi links that break down every few, min few minutes if you're really unlucky. So yeah, in general, I'm a mesh routing enthusiast, and I think we need better protocols. So I set out on this journey, journey to create better ones to test, test the protocols. So of course, that, this got me drawn to um, other people with similar goals, and this brought me to the, to the Battle Mesh. Uh, the, for those who don't know, the Battle Mesh is a yearly conference in Europe. Sometimes uh, it's in, uh, it was in Leipzig, it was in Vienna, it was in um, well, diff different European countries, Slovenia, I remember, and there are a lot of like 40, 50 people maybe, and they bring a few routers, and then they do the, the battle uh, where they put their favorite route mesh routing protocol on these routers, and then they do tests, throughput and stuff, and well, yeah, then they see in the end after just some luck, they have some graph where they can say, yeah, this is one bit better than the other one, and, but that's it, and of course it takes a lot of time to set this up. Then, of course, uh, when you change a different routing protocol, then you might be unlucky and somebody is using a microwave and this uh, influences uh, the results very badly. And um, also my personal perspective is that I really want to have like something that is more efficient and more scalable. So throughput is maybe not the, the most important concern, but it's connected, since uh, if you don't have much throughput, then scalability will be a bit harder. Um, so yeah, um, <coughs> so this is not really what I wanted to test. I mean, it's still interesting, 
but um, yeah, and um, but scalability, it's a bit hard to get a few thousand routers to this event, and I mean, it's just too costly, just too much work. So with the corona, of course, everything became virtual, and I thought, okay, let's do a virtual battle. Um, uh, I mean, it fits. I mean, I was already creating some software to do that uh, for myself, and I thought, okay, let's do a virtual battle. This has of course, the drawback that you don't really have real hardware, real Wi-Fi interference patterns that, and, and stuff like that. Uh, but of course, I thought, okay, let's keep it simple. Um, what I can achieve right now, um, at least throw everything uh, um, out, like if you're in a balloon and you're going down, then you throw everything out until the, the balloon flies. So that was basically what I was doing. So I wrote myself a tool for first uh, to do this um, virtual mesh route, uh, virtual networks, uh, where I can run uh, like Wi-Fi protocols um, on each node. It's like you have a Fritz box or some Wi-Fi router. You put some software in it, and it has ability to throw to send some packets, and then the packets will be transmit, received, transmitted and received by other nodes in a, in in a, in, a, in reach, and then processed and in this way, they need to organize themselves so you can reach everybody uh, without much delay, without dropping too much package and packages and stuff. So what I did was, uh, yeah, let me, yeah. Um, I did, uh, yeah, some tool. It is called MeshNet Lab. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's some other software out there. Uh, some is very similar, um, but mostly they do like containers uh, thinking when you think of Kubernetes and stuff. Since I only had a very small laptop, I don't much re much resources, but still this plan to have like emulating like ha at least a few hundred nodes, uh, this was not an option. I don't have that much RAM or CPUs or servers. So I thought, okay, let's throw everything out, um, especially containers. Uh, so um, what I did, I was using uh, Linux network namespaces, which is really awesome. It's like one of the building blocks of, uh, of containers uh, on Linux. Uh, but if I, I'm willing to throw out a lot of stuff, I can only use this one and script everything with Python and use IP commands, ping, SSH, stuff like that. I mean, SSH for running it maybe on two laptops or even more. And yeah, it's, it's on the internet. Uh, the link will be in the, in the end, uh, but I think it's important that it's a CC0 li license, you can do everything you like with it. So just giving you maybe a little bit of an introduction to Linux network namespaces, which is the core of what I do. Um, yes, yeah, I've t told you it's a building block for LXC, Docker, and the likes. And of course, on Linux, you have other namespaces like file namespaces, stuff like that to do some kind of virtualization, but I threw everything out and just used the network namespaces. So you can already do that if you have a recent uh, r uh, Linux uh, kernel uh, with this IP command, you can I use this IP NetNS, which stands for network namespaces, namespace, and you can add some namespace, give it a name, like, like in the slide here, we create a namespace called foo, which has its own network namespace. And then you can like list it, and then you can execute arbitrary commands in there. Of course, if you do something like ls to list all the files, since this is a network namespace, you only see like yeah, you see what you have in, on your disk. So it's not encapsulated on this file system level, but just different network stack. So if I do like in this namespace this IPA like list all interfaces and addresses, I will res see only this local host uh, interface, which isn't the one I usually see. So this is a different one. So, and then you can go ne next step, you can cr create virtual cables, which you see by having two interfaces. So if you stick in one interface, one packet, it just comes out of on the other end of, the, uh, of this uh, cable, on the other interface. And then you can put these interfaces into these namespaces and connect these, uh, yeah, virtual nodes, basically. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, here are some, some commands. If you want to try it at home, it's uh, not dangerous. Dangerous, dangerous. it's fun. 
uh, where you uh, create a cable and then you can stick it in different namespaces and yeah, then you see, okay, we have uh, this interface and this one namespace and the other namespace. And of course you can start net uh, some arbitrary network program on a Linux in this network namespace with this IP NetNS XTech and then the name of the namespace and then just the command where you start your, your program and it will just see these interfaces and have this uh, different T TCP IP, this network stack. So, so this, is, this, is a, this is just the building block of um, what I've used. So, and this is like very um, efficient. So I was able to, to emulate a lot of nodes and how much we will see soon. Um, yeah, uh, and this whole um, MeshNet lab, um, my little program consists just of a few Python scripts, one that takes a JSON file and sets everything up uh, in a way. So I have like this network namespace, every network namespace is one node and these are connected by table and I can have a JSON file where I define, okay, this is a cable with 100 Mbit, some packet loss, stuff like that and connect these and then I have some magic there uh, which I will slow you, show you on the next si slide uh, that will um, show you a bit how I managed to make it more Wi-Fi like. So the thing is I, uh, every node will have one interface. You send some, some ping, some packets there and it will arrive um, in other namespaces. Uh, not just one but multiple. It just depends how I define uh, my network via this JSON file. And then, of then I can start like, for example, Batnet Advanced, uh, which is a common routing protocol uh, for Freifunk networks um, in there, in everyone. Um, and yeah, they will see each other and do meshing and then ca I can do pings and stuff like that. And uh, something that is, uh, I should note is that this is an emulation. Um, it's, a, it's not a discrete event simulation, so that means just by throwing more CPU power it, on it, at it, it won't like run faster. Also, I have this problem where when I send a lot of packets, then it might influ influence random things in other parts of my virtual network. So this is really my bad for uh, emulating or t for testing uh, through Protosol. But if you keep your, your traffic low um, the, to, to a certain amount, then uh, you can get very, very big setups. So a bit of the internals before we go to the results. Um, <coughs> yeah, basically you have this namespace. So let's say you have like uh, a network with node A, B and C and B is connected to A and C. And then internally I have this set up this way where we have like three namespaces. Every namespace have, has an interface uh, in it. So every application you start in this network namespaces will only see its own interface. And this is one connected the other end to, the, to a different namespace which is basically my, my red rope for all the cables uh, which I just called switch which I've stuffed full of uh, bridges and bridges that are connected to each other uh, according to the JSON file, I mean, or according to how I want these nodes to be connected. And which what I did is that I dumped down those bridges to be uh, hubs. So hubs are like, well, as a network engineer, you might still have a hub somewhere, for, well, probably not anymore, but like 10 years ago, it was still valuable if you wanted to do like packet inspection because a hub, when you send a packet, I mean, it's like a switch, but if you send a packet on one port, it will come out on every other port. So this is like a dumped switch that doesn't really remember where to send a packet to if it arrived. So, so you can like put in two devices and they can interact and on all the other ports, you can like listen in on all the packets. But nowadays you have switches where you can just configure them so they will do the same thing. But like 10 years ago, these like old devices were still gold if you had wanted to listen in on, on, on traffic. So this is what I did. So since I wanted to have something like a broadcast domain where you just send, send some packets that might not even be a broadcast packet, but maybe just a ping or so. But 
So, but this packet will still be received on, on all neighboring nodes, I mean, in, the, in this top topology. So if C, uh, sorry, B sends out ping on the, its uplink interface, it will be received on the uplink interface on A, network namespaces A and C. So this is basically the magic source I, I've used here. And the switch namespace, yeah, I've, I've used this one so I don't pollute my usual uh, network primary namespace. So if I do on my console just IPA, I don't have like thousands of, of bridges listed there, which could be really messy. Okay, so let's get started with the tests. And uh, so I've already told you that um, measuring throughput isn't a really good idea with these kinds of tests. Um, but I, what I wanted to do first, of course, is to benchmark how many packets can I get through until everything gets screwed. So maybe packets getting dropped for no apparent reason. And of course, con convergence is something that I can test, which means that uh, the network, every n in the network, every node, every state of this routing protocol instances, um, they um, know about all other nodes if they don't do anything stupid, I mean. And so if I change something, then it needs to converge again. So every node has like the, the a coherent uh, view on the network and can route according to its routing protocol. Al also, if I change a lot, this is called mobility. Um, so you can think of like uh, Wi-Fi routers on, on cars, I don't know, uh, or just say get turned on and off and connect or connect to other devices. And of course, my favorite topic is scalability. Um, so this is really what uh, I want to test here. Um, and also try to f test usually IPv6. Not all routing protocols have a working implementation for IPv6, but well, I tried. And of course, the limitations I've already told you is yeah, real time, so it might take some time. Uh, I can't just throw uh, faster processes on it, but it's of course helpful. Um, and I have to be very careful for, I mean, c performance issues like IO in uh, I owe um, limitations to influence the results. That's something I want to avoid, of course, and I also can't really um, emulate uh, Wi-Fi interference patterns where you have a Wi-Fi router, it uh, sends something, but some other node uh, that was previously unseen sends at the same time, and then it both trashes with uh, the packet in, in air, stuff like that. I, I don't have that. But, well, it's not impossible to do. Let's, let's see, there are other projects out there that uh, might uh, do that very well. I will have a look. And, uh, of course, uh, since it's not real time, the testing duration can be quite long. So I have some tests that run under an hour, but also tests that, I mean, some of the slides I will show you, they took like two, one, two weeks to, to, to produce. So it was around the clock, the CPU was like on, mostly on like 5% idling, and then uh, the networks got bigger and bigger, and new tests, and, uh, and then the CPU got uh, quite sh stressed at the end, and that's where, of course, uh, you have to be very wary with your results, if they're really like uh, showing what you, um, what you hope, and not uh, some interference with the CPU or I.O. controller. So, the first thing I, I do is, is benchmarking, of course, uh, but I will have a slide uh, there in a, f in a few minutes. And um, one of the tests I have to had to do in like, yeah, this is a bit, was a bit annoying, uh, because Batman Advanced, for those uh, who come from the Freifunk community, it's, uh, it's a routing protocol that's used a lot there, uh, but it's also uh, implemented as a kernel module. And they used like a single threaded primitive there, that I couldn't get rid of, so what I had to do for, for this was to get a server with like a lot of CPUs, and uh, for every CPU, CPU or two CPUs, I used the virtual machine and run my simulation there and uh, connected all these virtual machines um, over tunnels, and yeah, but I got it working. It, it was a bit, a bit hard to do, it was, and I had a lot of help, so thank you for, uh, for that. Um, so I have some results there as well that are comparable. And okay, um, now of course to the routing protocols, I actually uh, tried to or tested successfully. 
were, for example, Yggdrasil, um, which is mostly um, a spanning tree protocol with cryptography. Um, so um, all IP addresses there are like derived from a, from a, from a secret key uh, or public key, at least a cryptographic key. So you can't really choose your IP address. And it has a spanning tr tree architecture, which tries to make a spanning tree out of everything, like OSPF maybe. Uh, but it's more mesh-like, but it's mostly used for um, over, over the internet connections. It's interesting. And Batman Advanced, uh, I've already told you, is used mostly by Freifunk uh, communities, as far as I know. Um, yeah, it, it's for really mobile mesh networks. And then there is Babel, which is um, also um, for, for these cases, but also focused on over the internet and you can push out routes, so it's more f you can integrate it very well in um, professional uh, setups when you are a network uh, uh, engineer, stuff like that, and working on a ISP. And then there's OLS R1, which is also previously used, heavily used by the Freifunk community, which only really supports IPv4. I tried IPv6 support, but it was broken. But there's a newer version, OLS R2, uh, which worked quite well in that regard. And then there's, of course, BMX6 uh, BMX and BMX7, um, which are like descendants of Batman Advanced. Um, but this is in user space, and so they have a different protocol. And then there's CGDNS, which is a bit old, uh, also like a bit comparable, comparable to Yggdrasil, uh, CGDNS is like the kind of a predecessor of uh, Yggdrasil, I would say. And then I tried also OSPF, uh, which I didn't get to work, honestly. Uh, maybe someone can help me with that, uh, because it's a bit tricky, uh, because we, I don't have like a, um, I can't, can't manually configure the, all the nodes. I mean, the, it's meant to be as an ad hoc mesh network. so. Every node, 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 node wakes up, starts up, and, and sees packets incoming, and needs to figure out where it is, who are the neighbors, and stuff like that. And OSPF is mostly, uh, well, it's, it's a bit hard to configure that way. So if somebody can drop me a hint, that would be awesome. So let's get to add some actual results. So I've told you, uh, first, uh, we need to do some benchmarking to see how much nodes can we run before we get into trouble. So I said, OK. Um, I tried it on a laptop, on a server, and what I did was um, I created um, some network. I think this is like a grid um, of nodes, and I tried with, tried with, for, yeah, with different kinds of nodes, and they did some pings, and then I saw, okay, how many packets do of these pings arrive at randomly selected uh, pairs of nodes. So I select some random pair of nodes that are not neighbors, and of course not itself. And uh, then I sent a ping and said, okay, if it arrives, uh, then uh, all is good. And of course, uh, some of them doesn't ar don't arrive. So then I get some, some percentage of the arrival there. And you can see that when I get to, for my laptop, uh, this one was my old one, when I get to like 120, nodes, then one of the routing protocols, in this case Batman Advanced, um, experienced packets to be dropped. So I, s I knew, okay, so much I can f go so far if I don't do much traffic. And to be safe on the laptop, I would go maybe with 100 nodes tops. And for the server, it has a more beefier CPU. It was an old one, I think from two 2012, quite old, but back then, top notch. Um, I got up to 250 nodes, so I had a good like um, um, uh, ballpark where I can um, scale this up. So my, my setup also I can distribute over different uh, computers, so that was very helpful. And a bit to my measurements, I mean, I've already told you how I measure this packet arrival in percentage, so 100% means every node, every every uh, ping arrived. Usually I do like, uh, I don't know, 200 pings, and when uh, half of them arrives, then I say, okay, it's 50% arrival. Um, and of course, uh, I pick random pairs, 
and uh, these are not meant to be neighbors, and of course, a path has to, in theory, exist. And, um, yeah, uh, but I didn't uh, measure throughput, and I didn't try to tr press that, because that would harm my results. Okay, and, yeah, I also didn't do much pack packet loss, because, yeah, I started with this uh, setup, and, and maybe at a later time I want to introduce something like Jitter, that you s usually see with Wi-Fi, uh, packet loss, and stuff like that. But for now, every test you s will see here, every result is based on an assumption that I have like 100 megabits n links between the nodes with one millisecond delay, um, of course, unless stated otherwise. Okay, so for convergence. So I've already told you, convergence is measured um, when I, well, in this case, uh, when I um, change, when sh something changes, and then I measure how the, the connectivity changes, I mean, how many of these pings arrive. And in this case, what I did was, um, I set up this whole structure with these namespaces, then I started like at time uh, zero here, on the x-axis, all the nodes, uh, oh sorry, all the protocol software, I mean the same one, of course, in every namespace, and then I did, in after two seconds wait, I did pings, and I saw, for example, here, let's, let's say, use Batman here, uh, which is this light blue line. Uh, so I did this every two seconds, I think, um, and we see up until maybe 27 seconds after start, uh, none of these pings arrived. But then it got to 100% very quickly, so, and this, this could be explained, someone uh, from the developer team explained it to me. So, I mean, this is not la something like bad, or so this is just, um, yeah, timings. And this is just starting up the, 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 the Batman Advance instance, and of course all the instances here. So, and testing was basically, I started the, so uh, I created this network, then I started all the clients, waited two seconds, uh, measured the pings, and then draw the point, and then I did everything all over again, with the exception that I now waited four seconds. Then I tiered down everything again, then uh, started up everything again, then waited six seconds. So that takes a long time, but in the end I got this graph, and um, it's not really that important how fast these uh, protocols uh, go up here, but it's still some interesting thing that um, shows you some implementation um, some timings that are part of the source code, so part of the config default configuration. So this is not like saying, okay, this bad protocol is very lazy or very bad or slow. Um, of course, you could maybe do it better, but uh, in practice, it doesn't really matter because this is just like startup time. Of course, uh, at point zero, all the instances were already started or just started, but um, then I, at this point, I got like counting the seconds. And uh, one oddity that I found here, and that was also reproducible, uh, was the CGDNS. I don't know what they do at 30 seconds, but the, the convergence uh, goes down, so not uh, many pings arrived here. I don't know why. But this is, well, it's interesting to see. And of course, th all this what I tested was on a grid structure. So I have uh, like nodes, uh, like, yeah, on a chessboard, and they have, like, four neighbors. Yeah. Okay, but, of course, I did the same test not only on the grid, but also an, on a, what I call a random tree. It's like a tree structure, but it's not f balanced. Um, I have a picture of it uh, in the later slides, uh, but it's still, I think, interesting. Okay, so we have this on a, on a random tree, which is basically the same s result. Um, then uh, I did it on a line, which is pathological, path pathological, because usually in, in reality you don't see like mesh networks that are just like a like a, a line, one node and the next line, and it only sees the two neighbors, and then you have like yeah, I got up to like 60 nodes. So usually you don't have that in reality, but it was still fun to try out, and you see. Uh, for example, bad advanced and other protocols have a lot of problems there, even after like uh, 60 seconds. Um, oh, no, I, I said uh, 60 nodes, but it's 50 nodes. 
uh, that's what it says here in, in the small font. Uh, so that must be true. And um, yeah, and uh, you see that Babel, for example, sorry, Bad and Advanced doesn't go up to 100%, which is understandable standable when you see that um, the metrics that Babel uh, that Batman Advanced uses um, doesn't allow so much hops anyway. So it can't get up to the 100%. So that's just some, some interesting fact. But in reality, you don't have that many hops in your networks, network. So if you have like 50 nodes, I think this is uh, on, on, a, on a grid, I think this is actually 49, like seven times seven. And then you have like seven yeah, square root, yeah, around maybe seven hops. And uh, so, but some of these uh, can take a longer uh, distance and yeah, that's where they get dropped. Okay, so yeah, this is basically some results here. Um, nothing really interesting. Now I think it hope it will get inter more interesting. And there I have to change actually f because uh, it doesn't show the animation uh, in the presentation mode. And um, here I tested the mobility and you see this graph. I have uh, slides li like this uh, coming next. And uh, what you have to, uh, if, you, if, you don't, if you're too lazy to look at all these graphs, then uh, sh look at this bar chart. So this is just like the, the summation of what you see in, in, the, in the graph above. And what we see here is on the right, the animation, how the network like moves. What I did here was in this JSON, JSON file, I um, gave every coordinate like a GPS coordinate a uh, random one, and then I said, okay, after when two nodes are in a distance of a few hundred meter or 150 meter, I don't really know, um, then I make a connection. And then every like two seconds, um, I uh, move these nodes into this virtual space randomly, and then I see which uh, nodes are near each other, and if they're in, in range, then I make this connection. So is this uh, so it's just a connection or no connection? And uh, what I see here is, okay, there's not much mobility, not much changes here, but we can see that uh, at least three protocols have a few problems here because they're, well, they're not really like optimized for mobility, but everything else is like, yeah, 100% of all pings arrived. And um, now get, let's get to the next um, slide. Maybe you can do it that way. No, didn't work. Um, nope, oh, that was new slide. Um, and I think I need to start the presentation anew because uh, it has created a new presentation. Okay, why not? Is that it's something I can do? Yeah, recover. Why not? Okay. I can do it. Well, I think I want to go there because here we have much more mobility, and you see the all other protocols except these three um, are also having pro uh, lots of lots more problems. I can see it's very chaotic here, but still most of the mesh routing protocols that are meant for well optimized for mobility are holding out very well, and every well nearly every packet arrives except for these three protocols. Um, let me, uh, how can I show this uh, from first slides? To from, yeah, okay, yeah, I see it doesn't show here. Okay, so next slide. So what are the results here? I mean, uh, these three were CGDNS, Ictorazil, and BMX7, which are having some pr problems here. Um, well, it's not that surprising, except for maybe for BMX7, but um, yeah, m maybe there can be do done something via the configuration, but I've al always used like default configurations. Okay, so this is just a, a different mobility scenario where um, I've also measured the, the traffic. And what you see here is, um, uh, I can't really see it on my screen, is that, um, mm, maybe that way, uh, it's just too small on my screen. Um, yeah, 
but um, yeah, this is like a different high mobility scenario, and you see that uh, Yggdrasil, for example, creates a lot of traffic, but for routing it doesn't do so well, um, very badly, but I've been told by the developers that they're improving on that situation. And um, all the other protocols here use a lot of uh, low overhead, low, low traffic. And um, yeah, and Batman Advanced and BMX 6 and 7 are doing quite well here. Okay. Yeah, these are just the results. So um, yeah, I guess that's no surprise. So now to my, mo my f most favorite um, result is uh, scalability. So I got hold of, uh, of a server with a lot of power, and so I was able to simulate uh, up to 2,000 nodes. For this one, I did 1,000, just because 1,000 nodes in one line is like horrible for, for your routing protocols, because in reality, it doesn't happen. Um, what, we was, what you can see here is uh, that if we go up with the number of nodes, that, uh, yeah, what we have here is that uh, we reach something like, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah it, well, what we can see is that the traffic goes up linear for most protocols. For some, for Batman, for example, it stays the same, but also we also see like these dotted lines here, they go down very quickly. I mean, we can see it here, which basically means uh, that this is on the right side, that most of the pings don't arrive. So basically our result here is it do this doesn't really say uh, much to us. So since the traffic uh, doesn't really arri arrive the pings, the packet loss is too high, um, we can't really say something is better than a different one. They are all like bad on in this scenario. But in reality, of course, you don't have like a thousand nodes in one line. Okay. Now on a grid, it gets more interesting. So. Uh, you see most of the routing protocols are doing quite well uh, with, with this scenario. I got up to 2,000 nodes um, in, on a grid, and most of the pings arrived. And what is most interesting here, I mean, is that for Batman, it goes up and down, and that means that uh, the amount of traffic that got in, in on one single node, on, on average, is going down. And actually, I don't know why. But... Um, I hope to find out at some point, but you can also see that here the, the amount of packets that arrive this is a bit cramped, but it's also going down after this, uh, this high point. So this is, um, well, basically means that, yeah, Batman uh, has some problems here. I don't know uh, what it is. Maybe it's the CPU, uh, since I had to do some special things with Batman here. But in, uh, in general, I can s say that our traffic on a link, in, in, on average, with the size of, of the network on the, on the grid, uh, grows linear. And uh, for some cases, well, I don't know what's really happening here. So th there's a lot of questions here, but, um, well, I uh, tried to push it by throwing out a lot of stuff. And uh, these are like some average traffic results. Um, that I measured there. So you sa can say that OS R1 is quite doing quite well. Um, I've omitted Batman here because the packet loss was just too high, so I couldn't really get a like, meaningful result. Um, and also did this on a random tree. But we also see here a lot of traffic packet loss for a lot of protocols, which don't really scale to apparently to, to this size to these sizes, and we also got like this hill structure for Batman Advance, which is probably having with some problems uh, with the metric. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's basically how this random tree looks like. Um, yeah, it's just not a balanced tree, but yeah, like a tree. But the thing is, we don't have any loops, uh, which you, of course in reality you never have. Um, Usually, mesh routing protocols try to avoid loops, and in this, ca this case, they don't have to. But so I was expecting that they might do well, um, but of course, there are a lot of other factors that you have to take into account. And also tried this on Freifunk networks, uh, topologies. I've downloaded from the Freifunk community sites. Um, 
yeah, I mean, this, I've, I've included this slide, but the results are not very conclusive, so you can't really say that one is better than the others. And um, yeah, and I hope to get my hands on, on more hardware so I can do more extensive tests that are more meaningful, but these at least are interesting. And with this, I would like to conclude my talk. And um, as I've told you, um, all the results, well, the project is on GitHub, also the results, um, and there are also scripts you can run, like uh, there's a test ordner, there's, there's a Python script for each test, you can run it, and then there's a different one that uses Gnuplot to produce the exact images as I have, and you can just try it for yourself and have fun, and I hope to, can, to use this, pro, uh, this uh, tool to compare other routing protocols, maybe to create my own, and see how it goes with the other ones before I go to actual hardware. And of course, I've told you I'm more interested in scalability for now. And with this, uh, this I would like to conclude my talk and thank you for watching. And if you have questions, uh, now's the time. Thank you very much. Okay, hey. thanks for the presentation. We have some questions. Okay. I brought my laptop. Um, okay. Questions are arriving from the internet. Uh, so one question is, question about all these nice graphs. Yes. Do you have error bars as well? I guess you repeated the measurements more than once. Is this worth looking at that with outliers, etc.? Yes, I did error bars uh, in the beginning, but uh, since one run of the entire graph uh, took like hours, uh, it was very tiresome. In the beginning, I did like 10 uh, iterations of each um, graph. Then I noticed some bug, then I had to fix it, then I tried again. And that's uh, how the, the weeks pass, and now it works. But still, some tests, like scalability tests, it takes like a week, maybe. I can try, of course, for, for one routing protocol, which is much, much quicker. But if you do 10 iterations for your, for example, for your error graph, it's just too tedious. Uh, I would like to have one, and uh, what I can say is that uh, the error graphs um, show like, um, not much, that much variability, so mo most of these result, results are, if you see them, they're, uh, from the quali quality-wise, uh, they're the same, if you repeat them. Good, thank you. Another question from the internet that just arrived is, why did you choose to cook your own protocol test bed? Thank you, that's a good <laughs> question. The thing is that, uh, as I um, said in the beginning, is that most uh, test beds I, I've uh, found on the internet. I have a list on my uh, MeshNet Lab, uh, MeshNet Lab uh, project page in, 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 the, in the bottom. On the bottom, I have a list of other projects that are doing similar stuff, and also I'm using like um, images, Docker images running like that, or uh, Kubernetes and stuff, and then I go out into the problem that I don't have the resources to run all these uh, like multiple Linux kernels. Um, and since I, well, I use this analogy where I'm uh, in an airship or a, a balloon and uh, I, uh, going down, so I throw everything out just to get uh, to this amount of nodes, and I still hope to get like uh, useful results. So that's what I did. And um, f a few weeks ago, I found actually a project, a Mininet Lab mm, Wi-Fi that. I have to look further into. I thought they, they do also like containers, which would be too heavy white, but somebody else told me, no, they don't use containers, uh, so I might have a look at there. Uh, I think it's also already listed uh, on my project page, so yes, um, I would like to use other ones. Uh, for me, of course, now I've written my own. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's reinvent the wheel, uh, but of course you learn a lot. Um, and yes, so I tried, um, but uh, I figured out that it's way over my head with the resource. I don't have that much. Okay, thank you. Um, from the internet, I don't see anything else right now, but I also wrote down questions. So one thing I, I, real, uh, I saw is that the CJDNS protocol mm -hmm. in all the build-up graphs yes. breaks down again around yes. 20 seconds. Why is that? Did you look into that? Uh, actually, no. Um, I only knew that it was uh, reproducible and uh, that I um, could rule out CPU uh, effects, which I was very uh, cautious about. 
that it might ruin my results, or then I see they how, basically measure how, how big, how, uh, how good my CPU is, and then it depends, of course, on the voting protocol implementation. So that's something I like to uh, like to avoid. And uh, with CGDNS and other protocols, um, I sometimes I've asked people that know m much more about these protocols and uh, why they think this might happen, and I got some replies like. Uh, yeah, this, there's some timer, or there's some, this is some feature, you can turn it off and then you won't see it, or it will have a bit different outcome, or you can adjust the metric. And uh, then, of course, if you have a really big Nash network, then of course the metric will be able to, to cover uh, these distances, and because routing protocols is the metric, like hop metric, says, yeah, maximum hop count is 30, then of course, after 30 hops, uh, the packet is, is dropped, Beautifully, and um, yeah, that's that's it. Because in reality, you don't have that crazy people. Maybe. Um, yes. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Um, another thing, I, I I thought it was interesting that I think you in the mobility graphs you just drop the connections, right? So when when mm -hmm. the connect when the distance <coughs> is longer than I think 60 yes. meters. So, so there's no degradation of the Wi-Fi quality and more and more packet mm -hmm. loss. Um, do you think that might change something if you had these abilities to, to calculate that into your simulation? Um, I don't know. I, I would like to, to, to check that. Um, I have it already prepared, not the graphs, but the, the test. I just have to run it. Uh, but of course, the Christmas time is a busy time. And um, yeah, I, I didn't get, I didn't have time yet to test that. But yes, I have this pre prepared, I just have to run it. Or of course, the people can, can run it uh, themselves, uh, but I have to point out where to like enable it. Mm, okay, yeah. And another question that I thought about is, so you, you talked about um, these, that, that for big networks it's not clear how these protocols perform. Yes. Uh, what are applications you could imagine, or in your dreams, if you like, think like mm. you do this next round of simulations and everything works really well and how you want to okay, let's, simulate let's it, and crazy. What, in what scenario could you help the Fifon community and build a really big network that yeah. was not possible before? How could that look like? Yeah, I, I know, I know uh, most Fifon communities, for example, in, in, in Germany use Batman Advanced, which is very good, uh, but they max out at 500 to a thousand nodes, uh, at that point you can't scale it up more because then the, the management traffic just for the nodes to keep say, yeah, I'm still there, it's still like, um, it grows too much, it grows in linear, which I saw in the graph, uh, but at some point you just saturate your Wi-Fi connection. And um, that's of course bad, and that's something I would like to solve, for example. Okay, this is more like a smaller dream maybe. Um, where uh, we have, we can connect entire city and everybody in a city, uh, and uh, you can also put in like low uh, bandwidth nodes, uh, sorry, connections there. That would be awesome. I mean, um, but you you don't really want to, for example, uh, watch a YouTube video over LoRa, which basically is uh, one of a few words every second you're allowed to, I think, to send. So it would be nice to have a routing protocol that. Um, not only scales uh, to these sizes, but it's very efficient and, it ca and doesn't it prevents from misusing like low uh, bandwidth connections with YouTube videos or stuff like that. Um, so it would be awesome and maybe a more crazier dream of all would be of course to connect everyone in a city with a decentralized network that doesn't have a centralized um, authority or so, something like that. And so um, Traffic that is sent local is meant for my neighbor, only stays l local, in the se sent local. So if, uh, for example, if some three-letter agency wants to spy on us, hell, they should get on a van and drive to your home and get out the, uh, the spying equipment. But I think it's atrocious, that it's very bad that uh, every traffic goes through some big box in, in Germany maybe, or a few of them, and you can just do mass surveillance there. So this is something I would like to, uh, to, to prevent, to give power back to the people, uh, so they communicate uh, with, with, with each other, with their neighbors, without being like dependent on other things. Of course, you can think of disaster areas where you can apply this, 
or if you get crazy, you want to replace the internet with something better. I mean, since 10 years, we got this saying that the internet doesn't scale anymore, which is kind of true. But also, we got a lot of more like uh, CPU and RAM, which helps a lot, and thicker pipes. So we can just uh, say, yeah, the bandwidth, the overhead is really low compared to all the traffic, YouTube videos, and, and Facebook status messages we send there. Um, but um, yeah, for Wi-Fi or for, for local, uh, for cheap devices uh, that don't have that much bandwidth, you need a much better protocol. So having like a protocol that scales to these big sizes is like really, really hard, like ex exceptionally hard. So I don't make, um, say that, yeah, I, I will be done like next year. Probably not, but I guess it will be a fun ride and maybe I can push the boundary a bit. So that would be something I dream about. Cool, what a nice outlook. Um, I think this, this talk, we're, we're done here. Um, we were over the time. Um, usually we would have a discussion round in, in, in a, uh, I think, big blue button room where you could uh, discuss with, with Morris. But in this case, he's also doing two, two workshops today in mm -hmm. our workshop area. So after a short break, you will just find him there and he's um, available, this, this workshop area is available under workshops.rc3.ou.social. So you can just join there. The um, times for the workshops is uh, something you can find on the schedule, which is also online. And with that, thank you, Moritz. Thank you.